This podcast is rated for a mature audience only. If you are under 18 years old, this content is not for you. Thank you for visiting us. There's plenty of other content on YouTube for you to watch. Have a great day. All content not created by the blue-haired bingo babe, that's me, belongs to its original creator. It is used to substantiate, augment, or exemplify this author's content. It is used under Title 17, Section 107 of U.S. Code, governing fair use for news, education, and critique. This was a tweet posted by Sheriff Mike Chitwood of Volusia, Florida, regarding two more arrests involving threats against schools. And Sheriff Chitwood is not messing around on this subject. From WFTV9, Sheriff Chitwood says deputies will continue to arrest and identify students who threaten Schools, and this was written by James Tutton on September 18th. Volusia County, Florida, Volusia County Sheriff Mike Chitwood says more students are being arrested for threatening to shoot up their schools. Chitwood spoke with Channel 9 during Eyewitness News this morning. That would have been yesterday morning. He told us that deputies in Volusia, Flagler, Putnam and St. John's counties arrested someone threatening to shoot up a school. I apologize to Floridians. Uh, you know, I'm a snowbird. Uh, last Friday, Chitwood said he would pursue maximum charges for anyone who threatened a school, including parents. Ooh, a page out of Michigan's book. Chitwood told Channel 9 his stance was cited by the Uvalde Foundation for Kids. They would like it done nationwide, Chitwood said. They want them held accountable on a national level with their photos and their arrest records, her walk and the parents from straight from Chitwood, quoting Uvalde uh, Foundation. Uh, Chitwood told us he would pursue criminal or civil charges to get back in investigation costs. That's, well, you know, somebody's got to pay everybody's salary who works on these things. He says the parents of two Heritage Middle School students each owe $11,000 after they were accused of making threats to the school. Here's the text of Sheriff Mike Chickwood's tweet. Again, Two more Volusia school students locked up for a, quote, joke, close quote, threat. It's a felony. This was right after their school played our message about how serious we take these jokes. Just unbelievable at Volusia Sheriff. This tweet caught my attention this morning. By the way, good morning. It's 19th of September, 2024. And it got me to thinking about the generalized motto of serve and protect that many police departments across the nation have as part of their mission statement or their motto. The people that Sheriff Belusa is talking about these teenagers, there's been a rash, as you well know, over the last three or four weeks since school started across the country of either school shootings or in this case, threats that law enforcement has uncovered and it makes you question who's parenting these kids and how is the behavior of the parents contradicting what they're teaching their kids let me read you some statistics from education week and this was published on january 4th 2024 it was updated yesterday school shootings this year how many and where education weeks 2024 school shooting tracker school shootings terrifying to students educators and parents and communities always reignite polarizing debates about gun rights and school safety to bring context to these debates education week journalists began tracking shootings on k-12 school property that resulted in firearm related injuries or deaths In 2020, I'm sorry, in 2024, we continue this heartbreaking but important work. 
More information about this tracker and our methodology is below. Here's the important part. There have been 29 school shootings this year that resulted in injuries or deaths, according to an Education Week analysis. There have been 211 shootings since 2018. There were 38 school shootings with injuries or deaths last year in 2023. There were 51 in 2022, 35 in 2021, 10 in 2020, and 24 each in 2019 and 2018. The latest situation on September 17th, a 14-year-old boy was shot and injured in the school parking lot at a Washington Technology Magnet School in St. Paul, Minnesota. I have to ask the question, is it any wonder we are getting tweets like this from a sheriff who's had to deal with this several times now in a very short amount of time, like a couple of weeks? I was about to close this episode when I saw this come across my random feed as I was going to get the link for our reporting poll. Tip of an alleged threat. This follows yet an alarming trend that we've been following, not only here in West Michigan, but of course across the country as well. 13 on your sides, Veronica Ortega joining us live for, uh, from the newsroom this morning. Veronica, this situation is a little different than the cases we saw last week at West Michigan schools. That's right, Emily Tanner. Last week we reported that four West Michigan school districts, including Jenison, Three Rivers, Byron Center, and New Wago, investigated threats that started on social media. This case is different because the tip came in anonymously through the student safety program OK to Say. In a letter sent to Parents last night, the Granville Public School superintendent says rumors are spreading that someone was allegedly planning to pull the fire alarm on Thursday at Granville Intermediate. Then, as students were leaving the building, they would be attacked. The letter goes on to say that the district would not be able to conduct a thorough enough investigation by Thursday morning. So, as a precaution, all Granville Public Schools, including preschool and treehouse programs, would be closed. The letter ends by stating it's unclear if Thursday evening activities will go on as planned. Now, we expect to see more information from the school district later today about those evening activities. We will continue to follow this story and bring you updates as they become available. In the newsroom, Veronica Ortega, 13 on your side. Veronica, thank you. The OK to Say program is run by Michigan State Police and just marked its 10th anniversary. Students, staff, and members of the community can submit OK to Say tips through text, email, and an online form. You can find that information on our website, 13onyourside.com. Notice that the age of the kids involved in these threats is younger than we have seen in the recent past. These are middle school age kids. These are not high school kids. We really need to ask the question, what is going on with our teen and preteen kids? And it's such an important conversation that we should be talking about it right alongside the missing teenager conversation. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you, and I'll see you real soon.